I'm gonna be honest, guys, I actually quite enjoyed this film. If you're in the same boat, or you're on the fence about seeing Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, give this review a watch to hear a different perspective. What is up everyone and welcome to Men Vs Movies, I'm Griffin as always and if this is your first time checking out the channel, click that subscribe button for more movie and television related content on a weekly basis. So Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom is being directed by J.A. Bayona this time around, taking over for Colin Trevorrow and it stars Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard reprising their roles from the original Jurassic World. So a volcano located on Isla Nublar is set to erupt, wiping out all of the dino life on the island. In an effort to preserve the creatures, Claire and Owen are tasked with mounting a rescue mission to the island in order to evacuate the dinos and save all the species from extinction. Now, this is all I'm going to say in the event that you've stayed away from all of the other trailers aside from the first one for Fallen Kingdom because unfortunately, they give away basically the entirety of the plot and it's kind of sad. I really wish that they hadn't do that. So that's where my synopsis is going to stop. So I think it's pretty universally accepted that with all of the Jurassic Park sequels we've gotten, none have managed to live up to the prestige, if you will, of the original. And while I actually enjoy The Lost World and Jurassic World, there is no debating their dip in quality. Some people take issue with that, and I really can't blame them, but for myself, it hasn't been too much of an issue. I just kind of accept the films for what they are, and for the most part, have fun with them. And I think the same can be said for Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. I genuinely don't understand Understand the immense hate towards this film. It's actually quite enjoyable. Are there issues? Yes. And those primarily lay with the script that Colin Trevorrow co-wrote, and I'll touch on that a little bit later on. But for the most part, I had an exhilarating time with Fallen Kingdom, and a lot of that has to do with the direction from Mr. J.A. Bayona. J.A. Bayona is a massive upgrade when you compare it to Colin Trevorrow, who directed the first Jurassic World. You can clearly see the craftsmanship that went into staging each scene from the cinematography to the set pieces to the quality look of the dinos. And we can't leave out the phenomenal score from Mr. Michael Giacchino who's having one hell of a year. His music complements the darker tone and direction of the film beautifully. As a result, it's evident that Bayona ensured that all levels of production were operating at their very best. It's also great to see a director like J.A. Bayona take his horror background from which he's known for and apply it to several scenes and moments throughout the film that play out fairly nicely nightmarishly. This is especially true during the third act and lends to some of the more memorable and unique sequences Fallen Kingdom has to offer. And most importantly, Bayona's touch helps elevate what is essentially a very mediocre script. It's all about execution and with the material he was given, I truly feel Bayona made the best film he possibly could have. I just wish he was coming back for the third installment because I would love to see a film both written and directed by J.A. Bayona. I think that would be a real treat to witness. Let's talk about the first act because I genuinely feel that this is some of the best material we've gotten from the Jurassic Park franchise since the original Jurassic Park. From the pre-title card opening to the sequences that take place during the volcano eruption on the island, everything is simply exhilarating. There's a sense of urgency and for me, the stakes were definitely realized. The best comparison I can make is that it's as though you're on the dinosaur ride in Disney World, you know, the one in Animal Kingdom, for those of you who know what I'm talking about and it's a race against the clock in order to complete the mission and get home. There are thrilling twists and turns and it shouldn't go understated that the decision to actually destroy and leave the island for good was a bold one that I feel paid off in giving the franchise a new direction moving forward. And speaking of bold decisions, I think a lot of ideas presented throughout the film were rather interesting, different, and took the franchise somewhere that we haven't quite seen before. They further explored the results and repercussions of genetic altering slash cloning and present some moral and ethical dilemmas that will be interesting to see how they pan out in the third film. I also, weirdly enough, think that the continuation of the weaponizing dino storyline from the first Jurassic World took a nice turn, though I have to say, in the second act, it becomes a bit cartoonish. Which leads me to the second act, which, oh man, 
It's essentially a live action cartoon and it's just a ridiculous execution of what kind of is a promising concept. The villain is incredibly cliched and such a mustache twirling, money grubbing maniac. And Toby Jones' character, <laughs> he was he was beyond hammy and he had such a stereotypical like 60s Americana accent that really threw me out of it for a second. If you've seen the trailers, you know that there is a essentially a dinosaur auction that takes place. That's all I'm gonna really go into regarding that, but yeah, it's uh, about as silly as what you would expect. Now, all that being said, I actually don't blame Bayona for the way this section played out. I truly think the blame falls on the shoulders of Colin Trevorrow and his script that he helped co-write. His approach to these interesting concepts that they present ultimately could have been much better. I would also say that the writing for the characters is also fairly weak, though no weaker than it was in the original Jurassic World. Chris Pratt's Owen Grady is once again fairly likable, and they managed to showcase some sentimentality of his relationship with Blue, Blue's upbringing and all that stuff, but unfortunately that's about all we get, and his character doesn't really evolve as a person. Nothing has changed from the first film, and by the end of the second film he's exactly that same person. As for Claire, I definitely think she gets a boost in Fallen Kingdom as she given more to do and proves to be much more capable than she was in the original Jurassic World. That being said, she also suffers from a lack of character development and in a sequel, that is not what you want. You want to expand upon these characters, dive into them a little bit more and they just don't do that, which is disappointing. Having said all of that and acknowledging the issues, I had a blast watching this latest entry in the Jurassic Park franchise. And the direction in which they're choosing to take the series in the third film seems very promising and I can't wait to see it. In the end guys, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom really is not as bad as some people are making it out to be. It's a lot of fun, it's got great energy in the first act especially. It's exhilarating, great memorable sequences, phenomenal direction from J. J.A. Bayona, I think that he really needs to come back for the third one, and I want him to write the script for the third one as well. Yeah, there's some scripting issues, some interesting concepts that are executed poorly on paper, and a severe lack of character development, but overall, I think that you're gonna have a good time with them. It's fun in the theater, it's great blockbuster entertainment, and for all those reasons and the reasons I've mentioned throughout my review, I'm ultimately going to be giving Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom in the fight. fight. Seriously, I think if you are even remotely interested in checking out this film, do it. See it for yourselves. I think you'll at least have a fun theater experience. Guys, listen, Men vs. Movies is now on IGTV, and if you don't know what IGTV is, it is Instagram's new YouTube-ish platform. I'm going to be uploading all of my reviews on there. You can follow me at my Twitter handle or Instagram handle right here. So if Instagram is your preferred method of consuming media and all that good stuff, you don't want to miss out on it. So definitely hit me up on there. It'll be a good time. Thanks guys for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed this review of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. I'm really curious to hear your thoughts on the film in the comments section below. And then also be sure to let me know what your favorite Jurassic Park film is. Obviously, most people like the first one, so if you can exclude that one, What's your favorite one in the franchise? I want to hear about it. And as always, be sure to like this video, share with your friends, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more movie and television-related content on a weekly basis. You can like Men Vs. Movies on Facebook and follow us on Twitter simply by searching Men Vs. Movies. And lastly, guys, if you like me specifically and you like what I have to say, you can always give me a follow on Twitter, at Griff Schiller. All right, that's going to do it for this review, guys. And until next time, take care.